So the next concept to the VLANs uh, will discuss uh, the concept of trunking. Now here in this in this section concept of trunking we are going to deal with the same concept of VLANs but what if I have some VLANs users of VLAN 10 connecting on switch 1 and some other VLANs of 10 connecting on the other switch. Uh, we are going to see how the how exactly the traffic is flowed between the same VLAN users on different switches. So that is, that's where your concept of trunking comes into picture. Now before we, we actually discuss about the complete trunking concepts, first we'll try to understand uh, why there is a need for trunking or what exactly uh, we're required to do here. But first thing we'll see, a single VLAN can span over multiple switches. Now single VLAN can span over multiple switches means there is a possibility that in your production network, you have some users of IT department uh, maybe sitting on the on the ground floor maybe on the first floor here and there are some users of IT department maybe some users on the second floor and there is a possibility that there are some some users of the IT department on the third floor now connecting everyone to the same <coughs> switch uh, physically it's not possible right so let me let me show you a little bit in a diagram way let's take an example this is my building and I have some multiple floors in that and there are some users of IT department some devices there are some users sitting in the ground floor or they are they are doing the work in the ground floor and there are some users on the next floor and there are some users on this floor and there are some users on this floor now uh, as they are geographically somewhat far from each other connecting them to the same switch is not possible but if you want to do that, then in that case, I need to bring some cabling here and then cabling from the top floor and then cabling from here and then some extra cabling required from this side. So which means uh, kind of physically connecting everyone to the same switch, it's going to require some extra cabling. So instead, what we do is we go with a solution where we connect these users to the nearest possible switch and then these users connect to the nearest possible switch in the same floor and then all the users of this will be connecting to the nearest possible switch generally and then the users on the ground floor will be connecting to the nearest possible switch here and then we can extend the LAN by connecting a cross cable between switch to switch <coughs> now this is something what you will find uh, in the production networks and this is this is the way we connect because it's not really possible for everyone to, to connect on the same switch uh, if they are in the same building that may be possible but if you if you just assume that there is one more building and there are some users of IT uh, present here and connecting everyone to the same switch is not possible so this is something what we do and there is something we should not do it so <coughs> now what I mean to say here is a single VLAN can span over multiple switches means there is a possibility that the users of the same VLAN same VLAN means same department might be on different switches they, they might be on different different switches like some users of IT connecting on this particular switch here some users of IT connecting on this switch now we want to understand how the communication process happens in these scenarios we are saying that same VLAN uh, same broadcast domain and they can communicate with each other but they if they are on different switches how the communication process happens <coughs> Now, in order to forward the traffic of the same VLAN user from one, one VLAN to another VLAN, there is one solution we can use. We can pass the traffic uh, using a separate links for each and every VLAN. That is one, one possible solution we can think about where uh, you can have some VLAN 1 user. If you want to send the traffic from VLAN 1, as they are on different switches, we can have a separate link for VLAN 1 one separate link for VLAN 1 and one separate link for VLAN 2 and then one separate link for VLAN 3 you can see there is separate link for VLAN 3 so which means between switch to switch uh, we can have one separate VLAN for each and every user each and every VLAN but this is not a scalable solution because let's take an example I got 20 VLANs will you go with 20 links between the switches this is something not possible so we don't use this scenario so passing the VLAN traffic using separate links for each and every VLAN is something not scalable not really applicable in the production networks 
instead what we do now what we can do is we can use only one common link which can carry all the VLAN traffic which means uh, we can we can ensure that the VLAN 1 traffic VLAN 2 traffic VLAN 3 traffic they all can go on the same link without interfering with each other that is possible so that's what we are going to see how it is possible how it is going to allow the multiple VLAN traffic on the same link without interfering with each other without uh, conflicting each other so to understand that process so before we get into the actual uh, process that is what frame tagging let's try to understand there are two different types of links we have here the first link we have something called access links access link are the links which are connecting to the end devices these are all access links so they, they belong to just one VLAN uh, by default they belong to VLAN 1 but we can shift them into VLAN 10 or VLAN 20 or VLAN 30 as per your requirement but at the end the ports which are connecting to the end devices we call them as uh, access links and they just belong to only one VLAN but the link which is connecting between switch to switch and this particular link it doesn't belong to any VLAN so which means it's not a member of any VLAN but it's going to carry multiple VLAN traffic so multiple VLAN traffic means uh, here if you if you just take an example here I got three different VLANs you can see the names here I have given some names as red here so if any one user of the VLAN red want to communicate with with the user or the VLAN red on a different switch you should go from the same link and that link we call it as trunk link which means it is carrying the VLAN red traffic and also it is carrying the VLAN blue, tra blue traffic you can see the user of the VLAN blue want to communicate with uh, with the blue blue VLAN user on the different switch he should be going on the same link and also there is one more VLAN green VLAN you can see here if the green VLAN user want to talk to green VLAN user he will be going on the same link so just like here even though they are going on the same link still I am going to differentiate right so even though they are going on the same link but now the question is how the switch is going to differentiate each and every VLAN okay so the trunk link is the link which carries multiple VLAN traffic but now the question is how it is going to identify like here I'm using different colors for identification but in case of switches there is a method called frame tagging happens now this frame tagging is a method which will ensure that even though they are going on the same link still they will be differentiated without interfering with each other without uh, without having any issues so let's see what is this frame tagging happens <clears throat> so in order to make sure that the same VLAN users on two different switches to talk to each other like here you can see the blue VLAN VLAN 1 should communicate with VLAN 1 on a different switch they, they will be going on the same link but there is a color differentiation here the VLAN 2 communicating with VLAN 2 on a different switch they will be going on the same link here and the VLAN VLAN 3 that is the green VLAN communicating with the green VLAN on a different switch they are going on the same link now what exactly switches will do is when when the particular frame is sent like in this scenario the second example VLAN 1 is sending a frame before it sends on the trunk link before it sends it is going to add the frame with some tag information so we call this as frame tagging process now this tag is actually containing something called VLAN ID now in that particular tag it is going to add the VLAN number and it is going to send over the trunk link now here for easy understanding we got different colors but the frame is sent with a tag and in that tag tag is like extra header information added on uh, inside your frame or a packet now why it is doing that because uh, the switch one knows exactly from where it is coming it's coming from VLAN 1 but the switch 2 do not know exactly which VLAN it belongs because all looks same they all are frames now there should be some differentiation uh, to inform the remote side of the switch that is switch 2 now it will be sent with a tag now the switch 2 will receive the frame with a tag and it will see the tag information it realizes that it belongs to VLAN 1 
okay and it will remove the tag and it's going to send back to the switch one as a normal frame so if you just try to observe here when when the switch is sending it is sending as a normal frame sorry when the pc is sending and when the switch is receiving it is as a normal frame and when it is sending on this side it is just as a normal frame so it is just a frame to frame but when when the particular switch is sending on the trunk link it is going to add the tag here which means when it is sending it is going to add the tag on that particular frame and once it receives on the other side it is going to see the tag and it is going to remove that particular tag because once it sees the tag it come to know that this frame belongs to vlan 1 so the switch 2 will ensure that it is going to send only to the vlan 1 and it will not send to any other vlans now this frame tagging is a method way which is going to ensure that even though there are multiple vlan traffic going on the same link but still each and every frame is differentiated and identified on the remote switches and this will ensure that even though they are going on the same link still the vlan traffic is differentiated they become a part of the separate broadcast domain now this is what frame tagging methods and this frame tagging method only happens only on the trunk links and when it is sending anything it is going to add the tag once it receives anything it will simply remove the tag by seeing after seeing that particular vlan information in that now frame tagging is mandatory and it is a default process which happens on the trunk links 